Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Benanin and for today's video we are doing a very much highly requested sunscreen review from Color Science. Today we're talking about the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Matte in SPF 50 and the Face Shield Classic, which is also an SPF 50. Both of these are mineral sunscreens. They are both water resistant for 40 minutes. Okay, so Color Science as a brand, as a whole, has a lot of different sunscreens. They have mineral sunscreens. I believe they have a chemical sunscreen, maybe. They also have sunscreen powders, like you could put on. They have a sunscreen stick, and then a bunch of other sunscreen lotion. In my opinion, from looking at the shade ranges, I don't think they are that inclusive for people on my, my side of the spectrum. If you are on the other side, they definitely will have a sunscreen for you. I picked it up from Amazon. I don't typically like buying sunscreens on Amazon because I keep getting products that you can tell have been opened and I don't feel comfortable using that on my face. But I went ahead and bought this one, these from Amazon and they both came sealed for me so I felt a little bit safer using them. And they also sell them on the Derm Store website. Let's start out with the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield Classic. This one is an SPF 50 with a PA of 4 plus mineral sunscreen with the active ingredient being zinc oxide 12%. It is also water and sweat resistant for 40 minutes. They claim that this is hydrating. It contains antioxidants, rich minerals formula, which provides a complete protection from environmental aggressors. They say that it has a weightless texture that blends in sheer for a natural bare faced finish. On the actual Color Science website, it's retailed for $39 and you get 1.8 fluid ounces. They market the product for people to normal combination skin and and dry skin. This also contains niacinamide, which is a vitamin B3 that helps to soothe this, the skin and help with sebum production. So if you have oily skin, that's great. And then it also has some iron oxides in it, which protect from photo aging damage. This one doesn't really smell like anything. It, to me, it smells like chalk and sunscreen. So the first day I wore this, I wore it on bare skin because it is marketed towards people with dry skin. So I assumed it'd be moisturizing enough. And on its own, it actually felt fine. Um, as you guys will see as I'm rubbing it in, it is leaving a white cast, like I said. But I will say that it wasn't really sticking in my hairline. So if you are someone that has facial hair, or if you have issue blending sunscreen into your hair, I didn't have that issue with this one. I didn't feel like it was sticking to my brows or to my hairline or anything like that. As far as the finish of it, I'd say that it's a pretty normal finish. It's not really mattifying, but it also doesn't give me any sort of glow at at all so it's just kind of that in between normal neutral finish I guess which was fine for me because I do have oily skin so I prefer this over like a glowy sunscreen and then after two hours this is what it's looking like I didn't find that this was drying or anything I do feel like with some mineral sunscreen sometimes it does feel like it's sucking the moisture out of your face but this wasn't drying at all for me and I feel like it held up nicely on its own without moisturizer underneath I went ahead and reapplied and obviously the cast got worse, but the actual finish with reapplication, I didn't have any issues with it. I didn't feel like it was peeling up or breaking up or separating or anything with reapplication. It went on just as smoothly as it did with the first application. So reapplication actually wasn't bad in my opinion. The next day I wore it with makeup and since this does leave a cast, I had to put on a little bit more makeup than I would normally wear um, just to cover up the cast but as you guys will see it actually looks fine the makeup applied pretty good on top of it after the two hours of wearing it with makeup I came back and I was actually very surprised by the way that this looks again I'm oily in my t-zone which that's normal for my skin but if you look at my cheeks oh my goodness the makeup looks amazing there like it doesn't look shiny, it doesn't look greasy in those areas. It just looks so smooth and it sat really well um, with makeup. If you have a lighter skin tone, this will probably work out fine for you, but if you're like tan and on, I don't think this will work for you at all. I think if you have oily skin, this is actually a very good option. Like it didn't make my face extra oily and I feel like I could wear it on its own solo. If you have dry skin, you may need to put a moisturizer under before putting this on top. 
um, just to kind of adjust it. I don't think it would work well on its own for people with dry skin. Um, if you have acne, I didn't experience any breakouts with this one. Um, I typically don't experience breakout though when I wear mineral sunscreens. I think it's the zinc in it that kind of controls my acne pretty well. So I wasn't expecting breakouts and I didn't get any breakouts from it. And then if you have sensitive skin, I would 100% recommend mineral sunscreens more than I would recommend chemical. Um, I didn't have any irritations with this. I typically don't have irritations with mineral sunscreen so would definitely recommend if you have sensitive skin yeah so i actually enjoyed the actual finish of it the way that it looked though i wasn't a fan let's move on now to the color science sun forgettable total protection face shield matte so it's the same sunscreen but in a matte version the active ingredient is the same zinc oxide 12 percent again is another tinted mineral sunscreen the tint is very light um so it did leave me a cast it does retail for 39 dollars again from the color science website and i think that's pretty similar to what the price is on amazon this one is marketed for people with normal oily and combination skin because it is a matte formula but <laughs> they say right on the website that it's ideal for medium to deep skin tones who's medium to deep skin tone do they think this will work on like and what do we consider deep because I'm deep but there's deeper you know and it whatever I just don't like that they put that claim there when it clearly is not for people with medium to deep skin tones but I digress they also claim it as a lightweight formula that absorbs excess oil blurs the appearance of pores and leaves the skin shine free they are saying that it's a moderate matte finish which I would agree with the first day that I wore it I actually wore it with a moisturizer instead of bare skin this is just what I typically do when I have a matte sunscreen. I find that matte sunscreens tend to dry the skin <laughs> usually, so I like to just start out with a moisturizer and then put the matte sunscreen on to kind of blur everything. So that's what I did for this. I put a light moisturizer on and then I put this on top of it. So I feel like the cast on this one was actually worse than the classic and you guys let me know you're seeing the footage as well but i feel like this one had a little bit more of that gray look to it than the other one did um and then as far as the actual finish i found that this one was kind of pilling up a little bit for me um and that could have been because of the products underneath or at least that's what i thought i also tested it out on bare skin and i still had the same pilling the pilling wasn't really bad though it was just like you could feel it on your fingers i wasn't necessarily seeing it on my face though one does kind of collect in your eyebrows and in your hairline more than the classic did but I was able to kind of brush it off and you know keep it moving if you have any sort of dry patches on your face like for me I had one like acne spot that was already dried out and it was kind of just flaking um, I found that the products really clung to all of those dry spots and made them look like more prominent so if you have any dry spots i would not recommend using this one on your face yeah i just didn't really like the way that this looked which was unfortunate because it's hard to find a matte sunscreen out there you know and then this is what it looks like two hours later it was definitely more oil controlling than the classic the mattifying aspect of it is legit um so if you have a lighter complexion and you're and you have oily skin and you're looking for a matte formula i guess i would recommend this because it doesn't like it does the job at keeping you matte but i didn't really like the finish of it so i went ahead and reapplied i don't know why i tried reapplying with this obviously the white cast looked 10 times worse and i'll just say the pilling got even worse with the second application and it just kind of it was just a hot mess like it wasn't blending in it wasn't smoothing out it was making my dry patches look extra dry it was kind of collecting in my hairline so not the best for reapplication would not recommend um my overall thoughts on the mat i don't think i would recommend this to really anyone this is definitely created more for people with oily skin to help kind of control some of those oils and it does the job in that area but i found that just the experience of putting it on the separation um the pilling the sticking to my dry areas the sticking to my hairline i just didn't really have a great experience overall so i wouldn't recommend the matte one really to anyone all right so now my overall thoughts on these two <laughs> okay well first of all let's throw away the matte one the classic one i feel like if you are lighter it could work like i didn't mind the finish i like that it didn't make me really oily i 
like the way that it spread out. I like the way that it wore with makeup. I like that it didn't cause me any acne or sensitivities or irritation. So overall, I liked the formula. I just didn't like the cast. So if I were to recommend one, I would recommend the classic, but be careful because it may not look that great on you. <laughs> okay, so yes, those are my overall thoughts. I hope I wasn't too brutal. I wanted to talk about the formulas and not get bogged down over the cast, even though the cast was awful. And I hope I did that for you. So that'll be it for today's video. If you guys have tried any of the Color Science products, I've only tried two and I know they have a bunch of other sunscreens. So if you've tried any of the Color Science products and you like them, let me know. If you tried any of them and you didn't like them and you hated them, them. also let us know and don't forget to leave your sunscreen recommendations down in the comment section below and i'll be seeing you guys in the next one bye